So I'm going to continue the project from yesterday. If you need a copy of it, you can get it from the network folder. I've got it on my desktop, and I'm going to open both the index and CSS files. Okay, so I'm going to run the project in the web browser. And I was already showing you that with F12 you can activate mobile friendly view. We have these various phones, and a few of them are tablets. For example, if you put it on iPad, if you activate the device previews and you set it to iPad, this doesn't fit on an iPad yet. So that's one of the things we're going to focus on. Here's another way to test this. If you, uh, if you leave it on the first option of responsive, at the top it shows these, all of these like little, kind of like a grid almost. If you hover your mouse over it, it says this is the width of your project if it was in some sort of small mobile device. The project looks nice. It takes up that amount of space. That's what we programmed via CSS. If you go one little square over, that's going to be the mobile M375 view. You hover over that one, you see each subsequent sort of shape is a little bit of a bigger device screen. So without having to choose a particular you know, model of mobile phone, these different sizes here, when you hover over these, these different sizes are ways to test the project in different sizes. Here it's gone up to 425. Remember our CSS kicks in when you're at 480 or below. You click on the next box out, tablet 768, that takes us to a width of if it, someone was on a tablet kind of device. With a width of 768. Here's where the project breaks down. We have not defined any CSS to look good at this dimension. You go out to the next box. Let's see, the next box is a laptop at 1024 wide. Okay, laptop wise, that kind of size wise, it's looking all right. The screen, the person's screen is wide enough to show the design at least. I think there's a few more. Let's see if you go out further. That's a laptop of 1440. So if someone's got a pretty new laptop, 1440 wide, uh, you can see that. That's what's going to fit on that size. And then you've got all of this space on the um, on the outside of the um, design, which we can we can tweak this because at a certain point, let's say you take it to this higher level, a 4K laptop, which I don't know who has one of those, but when you've got one of those really high quality screens, your screen is so high quality that it takes up so much empty space. So we can still deal with all of these dimensions. I'm just showing that then uh, Chrome and uh, Firefox provide these quick views to switch between devices. What might be most useful for the moment as we test this is to select uh, the mobile 320 and then the uh, tablet 768. Kind of jump back and forth between those two as we are about to write our code. Let's get back to Notepad and we're going to start to set up our more of our CSS. Okay, so we've got a bunch of code from the very beginning all the way to about line
to about 195. So the first 195 lines or so are regular view. Then at about line 193, 94, 95, that's what we're setting up for a small mobile device. So next we're going to set up code for, an, uh, for a higher level up. And we started with the smallest device. And now we're going to start to add code for subsequently larger devices. I want to add this code that we're about to before the smallest size. So basically the first code, here's our code for the biggest size. Then what follows? Code for a smaller device. And then what follows? Code for a smaller device. And then what ends it? Code for a smallest device. So we're going to back up to the section line 192 before the smallest device mobile friendly style sheet jQuery for a small we'll write for, a, for the smallest mobile device if you'd like to note that media query for the smallest mobile device because above that Media query for a tablet device. At media something. So we can add media something to target the smallest device. And we can add media something to target the sizes of a tablet. A little bit later after that, above that. We will then specify a different target. So here we're saying at media, have the style sheet, the CSS file, check the type of device and the dimensions of the device. The type of device will be all. So check all kinds of screens. This will apply to all kinds of screens and parentheses here's where we do min width 480px outside of the parentheses and max width 768px down here we've said here's how we will redefine our design the smallest device, you know, from 320 to 480, the maximum of 480. Technically, we could have written it media and all and min with 320 and max with 480. But we can say it just like this one time because this is the smallest uh, device, basically. The next level up is tablet size. You can see that in in the developers tools here because we've got a, a 320 size then it goes up to 375 then 425 then 768 tablet size so we're about to write CSS that will make the project look good between that small 480 and a slightly larger 768 so add media and we have a myth min width max width uh, what happens is exactly Well, it deals with it deals with um, the computer. You know, logically with the computer, it deals with either uh, a value exactly below or exactly above. So, yeah, logically we should round that up, up or down a little bit, because we are saying anything between zero and four seventy nine for this, and here we're saying uh, for. Uh, 80 and up. So there is like one pixel right in between where I'm not exactly sure what happens because it's right in between both. So I, I think technically, you know, we would have it to say um, 479 down here. I'm not going to change it, but you know, that's the idea <coughs> that there is like one pixel right in between that. It is less than and it is more than. I'm not sure exactly what happens. It It's probably going to depend on the web browser. Some browsers will round up to the next one or round down. 
This is gonna be a minimum of 480 and up, and this is gonna be, should be 479, a maximum of 479 and down. So what we'll be doing here is, uh, when we're dealing with this size, we want to change the size of our wrapper. We had a wrapper of 100% when it's the smallest size because we have such a small size to work with. We had a wrapper of a different size higher up because we have a higher size. And here for tablet size, we'll say dot wrapper, curly braces with 98%. Stretch out the design so that it almost fills the whole screen when you're on a tablet. So that I don't lose track of this curly brace, which begins the media query, I'll make a a comment Let's see what did I call it down here and media query for 480 pixels so and media query If we check this in the browser, the way we would be testing this is to resize your screen, specifically in this view, so that we've got the ability to check responsive. So here it is before I added that CSS media query, and here it is after. It should change when you're when you've got the tablet dimensions on. So I'm unresponsive, I'm on tablet. I think it'll work also with iPad. You select iPad. But here I'm under uh, responsive 768. It should shrink down so that you can start to see some of it. If it still looks like this, that the edge gets cut off, uh, you probably misspelled something. Now let's see if we put it on iPad. Uh, yeah, iPad also looks good. If you put it on some of these other ones like Galaxy or Nexus, they should also shrink. If this is kind of small, you can zoom in. There's a zoom right there. SSP, iPhone, so all of these are starting to look good, iPad, so iPad should look something like that, not cut off. And if you haven't explored here, the edit, you can click there and activate a bunch of other devices that are not, not on. So if, if for some reason you want to simulate having a Blackberry, you can do that right there. Officially BlackBerry, like a month ago, it was officially recorded that BlackBerry has 0% market share. So no one uses an, a BlackBerry now. Rest in peace. Uh, you can have some laptops over here. You can have some Lumia devices, iPad mini. If you turn some of these on, let's say Kindle, now have the option Kindle here as well. So we haven't targeted that dimensions yet. Uh, this is a 1600 by 2500. So we haven't said, what. Well, how does our design look at those dimensions? That's this whole point of writing all of this CSS. Uh, change our design so that it looks good on different devices. Question. Yes. 
Okay, so uh, let's edit a few more things. Uh, on tablet size, my idea is, okay, um, it fits in the design, but still, um, for the tablet, for that tablet size, I would still like things to be larger and more readable. So again, I, I will want to eliminate the two columns. I want to move this column below the content again and make this content a little larger. I want to keep this nav bar, it being a horizontal one, works fine on the, on the tablet, but I'd like to use more of the space, so we'll, we'll move again the sidebar down, so we need to redefine some things after, uh, after wrapper. Section.blog. First, clear both. This is going to deactivate the left and the right columns. Since you no longer have a right column with clear both, well, then we're going to stretch out the width of the, of the blog area. 98%. We need we don't need that border anymore. Border right none. And we don't need any more padding on the right. It looks very similar to what we did a little bit lower here. So on the on the 480 pixel CSS, like 265 or so, that's where we've got section dot blog. This is opposite of float left. This is where we change it. Now I had it here for with 100% for the mobile device, and the smallest mobile device. And here for the tablet, 98 looked good. But again, no border right, no padding right, no border right, no padding right. They're both. So in the browser, it'll look like that. Now the main article of section should be taking over the design. It's a nice big amount of space for it. The side gets pushed down, which we need to fix in a moment. But here we can focus on the content, and we'll still have the horizontal uh, nav bar so that we can uh, click those elements. After section blog, article figure. So the container where the picture is in, uh, I'm not going to change H2 top. That will stay as what it was on the previous lines. I'm not going to change article. That looked fine from what I created previously. And then article figure. I will, uh, we will edit the figure a little bit. We don't need to clear both. The point of doing clear both for the article on a 480 device is I wanted the picture and then the text below it. I still want, I still like how it looks, picture on the left, text on the right but I want to change a few things here. The article itself now um, will, will be uh, 480 pixels, the figure that is. Because I know that I'm working with a larger tablet size, here I put a value of 480 so that the image looks nice so 
here it is before that code here it is after larger image space on the side for the text if I like the way it is here or you want to tweak the size it should be obvious then what you would do this width here you can set it to different values if, if you think the image is too big decrease it a bit you can put percentages to see how it looks so some of these values that I'm giving you definitely you can experiment on your own to see what you like let's deal with that aside it doesn't look very good at the bottom now it's all leaned to the left and the designs a little odd so aside clear both so that we can have it exist on a proper view width of 97 percent padding nothing at the top nothing at the right nothing at the bottom but 1m on the left text align center So the uh, aside section doesn't look so good until we add that code, and then it'll look like that, where it uh, is centered. You've got those items. <coughs> Each of them is um, on its own line. Now, one thing you can't really test here, again, um, once I've put it in this device view and chosen responsive, uh, my rollovers uh, don't work. Uh, they, they still work, but I can't see them because I'm sort of like simulating a, a finger tap. So to see this next effect, I'm going to turn off the device uh, toggle and then kind of resize my screen to a certain point below 768 so I can show something here. Um, you can still hover over this. This column so that it's less than 768. You can do this hover. I want to do. I want to sh show the hover still because okay, you hover over this, you get the cool little color and all of that. With the little CSS, I want it to hover, but have the, the little uh, color here as well as on the right. So both on the left and the right of this design, I want the hover effect. That sort of tab. Border right. It's going to be border right. We had a border left for it to appear, and now we want a border right. Now the thing is where to add it. The way it worked originally on um, the way it worked originally before is we've got back on line one seventy five a side section a so for a link. Background color, color of the text and the border left, 15 pixels. We've, we've already defined that basic aspect. So targeting this again and then also adding border right will allow us to have the right side tab color. So a side section A hover. Of course, we've got a side, space, section, space A, no space, no space, A, colon, hover. This hover is directly attached to that A link, so no space. But that A is inside of section, so space. And section is inside of a side, so space. And all we need here is to say, border right. 
the same as I had before 15 pixel solid orange red I should get that color on both the sides. So again, this speaks to the power of CSS and the trickiness of it, the confusion of it, of what will make sense the more you do it. But hopefully it is here again. Any code that appears before will continue to be in effect until you say otherwise later on. So we said do this on line 175, and we said and then do this on line 116. The more of the confusion comes in, in that yes, the order of it matters, but also what matters is definitely the media query. None of this code will activate unless the person is viewing this project on this in these dimensions. Couple more things for this aside section A. dash bottom one pixel dashed midnight blue All right, or didn't we do white uh, no we did light light slate gray well let's check it here first midnight blue I think we changed this just so that it's more uh, visible in this design Actually, well, let me just check it. Okay, yeah, so I was changing it to dashed. Uh, that one's kind of optional. But what my idea was when I'm in the tablet view, I kind of wanted to change the design a little bit, just like making that red appear on the right or that orange red. And then we had a solid color, which was set up here. Uh, a side section A put a solid color in between each item each link with a solid color. Um, and here it said, okay, a dashed color, slightly different color. This is just for fun. Then we get that, that we've got the dashed lines. Now, it obviously works, but perhaps logically, let's move it so that this appears first before the hover. In that case, it did not matter, really, the order. But for logic, for the logic of it, I think this will make more sense. Because we're going from top to bottom, <coughs> and generally more general, down to specific. So we're saying here, everywhere, everywhere there's a link, give it a dashed line. Then, everywhere there, where there's a link, and the person hovers, make the color appear. That's kind of what we had in our code before. Section A, then section A hover, and then lastly, a side. We're going to leave the footer alone. This footer that was defined previously works just fine in tablet view, so we'll deal with a side H2. We'll tweak that a little bit regarding padding. Uh, so the easy thing here is you can copy it if you're in the right spot. I'm at about 181 in my two column view or, or two panel view. But we're going to do a side H2 padding and we'll change the padding a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
we want 0, 5, M, 0, 0, 0. When you're at the larger size, one quarter of an M at the top, at the top of the H2 look good on this tablet view now. Give us a little bit more space at the top of that H2. just pushes the top H2 elements a little bit down. So here's my design in tablet size. Seven sixty eight. When we get to these other sizes that are a little bit larger, the design still needs some tweaking. So if, if we go up to the next level of responsiveness, 1024, the design looks good. Maybe the text is starting to get a little small. So we can write some CSS. The thing with a big screen that you might notice, uh, I know that when I look at my friend's laptop, and she's got a pretty new laptop, like with a high quality 1080p panel, the text looks really small. So now the opposite is happening. When we go to small devices, you know, the text doesn't look so good. Now when we go to larger devices, the text doesn't look so good. So there was a time when everything was the right text size and such. And we can do that correctly with CSS. So I'm going to back up before this whole section of our media query of 768, because again, we're kind of going to go backwards a little bit. The smallest size is at the bottom. The second smallest size, or lower size, is second. We're going to go before that, so back up to where this section started, a few lines up. Before that, at about line 192, we're going to create a media query for Twenty-four device at media all and something. You see the syntax. Uh, check the media. We're on all media and a minimum of something and a maximum of something. So here, if we had our maximum. This kind of dimension will go up to the next level. Min width 768 pixels and max width 1024 pixels. So at this dimension, now we're, we're going to target the body. We hadn't mentioned body before. We were working with the wrapper or the section and all of that. Now we're working with a higher level body. So everything that's visible, body. And the first thing we'll do here is font size, 1.25M. Way 
up at the beginning, line 20, we had said 1.1m, so make the default size of our text in our project 110% larger, you know, 1.1 1 .1 larger. Here, on this size tablet, it'll look better, uh, more readable with our font one and a quarter size larger than the default size. When we make our font that larger, we should also change the line height, 1.3m. Make the space between each line a little bit bigger. It's very common practice to take what you started off as the size of the font and then increase it a little bit on top of that. So font size 1.1, font height 1.5. Here with a larger 1.25, change that. And that's another example where it takes a little bit to, to tweak it to see what does it look like. Then we can target the wrapper. Dot wrapper. width of 95%. So when we're down on this lower size, we're going to stretch out to fill more of the screen. Once we get break out of the smaller size to a larger size, we're actually going to do a little bit less width because if we stretch out that size even further, you get to a point where suddenly now the design takes up too much space. So a width of 95 is a good medium. And then a uh, nav list item. Line height, 1.5m. So we skipped a lot. We don't have to redefine anything about the header or the header h1 or the nav or the or the footer but then we get to nav list item now we did write it as nav ulli and that's much more technically specific but this that we've got on 72 is the same basically as 203 maybe just to keep it consistent so that it makes sense but it'll be the same thing nav ulli any list item inside of an unordered list inside of the nav bar. It's a little superfluous, it would still work, but that's what we had before, so we can keep it consistent. Now if we test this, and you resize your, your dimensions, you'll see this. Uh, so I'll refresh that, stretch it out to different sizes, you could also do is on the browser itself. If you stretch out your browser to the maximum size and then straight, uh, push it down at a certain point, there'll be a little jump. Go a little bit lower. There's another jump. So there might be a, a part right here. This might be like in the part where it's kind of between dimensions. That looks weird. You've got the sidebar, but there's nothing in the sidebar. But then if you're a couple of pixels below that threshold, then the CSS kicks in. Looks good. You go a little bit further. Again, at a certain point, there'll be a little bit of a middle ground, and then the CSS will kick in. So it's OK that there's a point where it doesn't, where it kind of breaks down. It's OK, because it's not really that you know, the person is going to be resizing their screen dynamically. They're going to visit the site. It's going to be that screen, that dimension right there and it's it they never see that there is like this middle ground where the design breaks down unless they are manually resizing their browser like this and how many of you ever do this you probably have your your web browser maxed out to a certain size or you probably have it to a size that you always look at so don't worry that if at a certain point the design doesn't quite work like this it looks really weird 
but you're either going to be looking at it here or here. So this was the tablet view or the, uh, the 1024 view. This is our 1024 view. And then we'll do one more. A, a larger size up. So we'll back up before 1024. At media, all, and min now the 1024 is the minimum max width another common size is 1600 pixels wide This one's pretty easy. Uh, dot wrapper, seventy-five percent. Oh wait, uh, before that, um, just confirm that your dot wrapper curly braces, the syntax. Uh, it's going to be 75%. The width is going to be 75%. Uh, so we're targeting the wrapper. Its width is going to be 75%. So now, when it's on a larger screen, the wrapper will grow, but only up to 75% to fill in more of this larger screen. We're not so high up to the 90s and such, because then it would be too wide. Um, I still want to have some of the background of where the galaxy is visible. See here if I open it up in the browser, refresh it. Check the different sizes. This is one of the things I'll be checking that works for the homework. I would open up your project and then I would resize it to these different sizes and I would expect you know that it would look a certain way at this size at this size I'm gonna I'm gonna look for these things uh, obviously if it goes like that that's fine as I resize it down to this size I expect it to look something like that and then I resize it even lower and then I expect it to jump to that design so I will be looking at the four media queries the three media queries that we made the fourth one sort of is the one at the very beginning, at the very top. All of those 190 lines at the very beginning are sort of a media query as well. It's the basic one. We never specified at media, min, and max. But all of that that came above it, those 190 lines, all of that is about setting the most basic 
styles. Then we target individual size monitors, individual size screens, <coughs> and that takes us down to 370 lines. So remember what I said, that the HTML was going to be like 100 lines of code or something, and then the CSS is going to be 300 lines. That's very common. So here we, we come to the end of the CSS. And notice we spent a lot of time designing the the project because it all still is basically uh, very simply HTML. If I take away the CSS, it goes back to this. Remember how basic that is? And everything that this is is all because of the CSS. Design, the hovers, the colors, the mobile friendliness of it, that's all CSS. Uh, I'm going to end the lecture in a little moment to give you the homework, and then you can have some lab time to start to work. But any general, general questions? If your code doesn't quite work, we'll fix it in the lab. But any general questions about the project? So... <coughs> We've got those two files. Um, let's um, let's look in the web design folder. I put the assignment for uh, project two in there. We'll look at it. I'll explain it in in the concept of it, and then you have time to work, to start to work. So check the web design folder, we've got CIS 15202 CSS assignment. Open that in the, open that to look at it. Project 2, some setup. Again, like the previous project, you're going to create a folder um, to turn in because you're going to have a few files to turn in. You'll need a folder with your last name, Project 2. You can use our starting point uh, code, which uh, I'll put the final version in the network folder in a moment. You can use our starting point. Make sure that the first file is index. You'll have a little block to put your author information. So this is nothing new. The actual requirements. You're going to create a multi-page HTML project about your favorite hobby. From this starting point that we did, this is the Marvel blog. So you're going to uh, take this starting point and whatever your favorite hobby is, whatever you like to do, music, rock climbing, whatever, you're going to create a project about your favorite hobby based on this. The details. Uh, you must have index HTML, about HTML, your choice HTML, which I'll explain in a moment, and one complete HTML page, which I'll explain below. So then there's some details. Make sure you change the title and the header so that it's about your hobby. The nav bar should have a home, your choice, and about. We had home, heroes, villains, about. So you're only going to need at minimum three items in the nav bar. You could do four as well as you want five if you want. Remember how you have to tweak the CSS so that the design, especially on mobile, looks nice when it has more or less of these four. But you're going to need home, you're going to need about, your choice, so three items. <clears throat> I'll explain your choice in a moment. <clears throat> your choice is the name of one complete HTML page about your hobby. They must be linked to real HTML files. So we created only the home page itself, index.html. In the folder, we've got index.html and my style CSS. The requirement is 
you will create an about screen and then you will create one more screen let's say my hobby here is rock climbing so I'm gonna have home I'm gonna have about and I'm gonna have another screen called tips rock climbing tips so I have home tips about I'm gonna need a home page that is complete you can put whatever you want on the screen as per the assignment an about screen and then a screen of tips in my case So in your aside is a little bit about changing your aside so that it makes sense. I have it here so that my aside uh, says recent posts. You can have that be titled anything else you want and then make up some items here. These items do not need to be linked. Create at least two entries. They don't need to be linked. So you can rename this sidebar so that it makes sense besides recent posts and have links here but they don't have to really link anywhere. So rock climbing, you know, top five perilous trails. And I have a list of some of the trails. They don't have to be actually clickable, but I want, of course, that the rollover works and your own colors and all of that. In your side, keep the second H2 and fill in some fake contact info if you want. So contact and then fill in some contact info keep this section but change it so that it's some of your contact info some simple name and and that sort of thing set your own copyright at the footer index needs to have needs one featured article with a real read more link so create an HTML page with one of the rest of the articles you should have two pictures and two paragraphs okay so what I'm saying here in the Marvel blog, we've had this whole time where it's Spider-Man, a little preview of the article, and then read more, which didn't do anything. To complete the project, for your hobby, you're going to have some sort of picture relating to your hobby, some sort of text here, little preview text, and then read more. On that read more will be a little bit more text. We've got one paragraph here, we need one more paragraph. Uh, imagine this is connected to spiderman.html so I would complete a spiderman.html screen and the easiest way to do any of this is when you're in notepad and you're working on this index file your starting point you can always go to file save a copy as this will copy the whole project into another file such as about.html and then you just need to change the details so like if I wanted to complete that spider-man I would need to file save a copy as spider-man.html and then change it on that spider-man file I wouldn't need the black cats article anymore I would cut that section out right yes so you want the read more to work yeah uh, just one of them uh, needs one feature article yeah so read more should work so some sort of preview about whatever that first item is could be more to read the whole article the whole item your CSS must be external that's done already and linked to your HTML file so when you create that about HTML obviously you need to link the about HTML file to the mystyle.css if I were creating that spiderman.html it would link to mystyle.css but the great thing is that when you do file save a copy as it copies it all and your code is complete set your own color scheme in CSS so these colors I pick these colors and I think these are nice colors and such but now you get to choose your own colors maybe that red color doesn't work anymore and I don't like that one I want my colors so you're gonna go in into your CSS wherever you've got examples of colors and such and change them to how you want set your fonts at least one besides the one we used in class so a lot of you already figured this out but we used or I used in this case what was the font I used a font
Pacifico. In my case, I used a font called Pacifico. You want to use a different font. Go back to how we activated the Google font. Most of you already figured that out, so check on that. But a different font than the one I used, Pacifico. Yeah. When we're If you have a specific font file that you want to use on your project, there is a way to do it. I would recommend for the moment to do it the way we've done it together with the Google Fonts, right? Our line here about Google Fonts. But if you want to use your own font, it actually is not simply including your font in the folder. You have to write different CSS besides that, which is listed in the book. So if you want to see how to do it that way, check it in the book. But I'm going to be recommending you highly and probably grading you that it is the Google one. Yes? Um, for the two pictures that we need to have, that excludes if we use a picture for like the background? Yes, because uh, that'll be one picture. But then specifically, the two pictures will be like, if this is it my article, article, it has to be related to the article. So you've got a new picture here for this article, you click read more, and then it's got one more picture inside of it. Okay. So those two pictures. And then, so each item you have where it needs to connect to a... To a real screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the read more to yet another HTML file. Yep. So we're going to have four. We're going to have the index. We're going to have about. We're going to have one more that you choose. That's three. Then you're going to have read more. So four total HTML files. So set a font. Your site must be mobile friendly. Well, if your code of CSS worked, that one's done as well. If you start with this starting point, your project will be mobile friendly. If this CSS code works, that you can resize your screen, because this is, like I said, I'll test it like this. I'll get all your files, and then I'll start to resize it like this. And if I don't see a jump between these sizes, you know, if I make it this small and it doesn't shrink to this, it's not mobile friendly. So that's one thing you have to do. And you'll have at least four HTML files. You could, if you want to, if you're an overachiever, but you won't get any extra credit, you could do four items here, but they should all be linked. So you have at least four HTML files and one CSS. Home, about, your choice, and read more. Four HTML files. One CSS file linked to all of those four. All of those four files, all of those five files, will go in that folder. Your images, I didn't mention images, and that's up to you that if you're going to include an image in your folder, or you're going to include an image that links on the internet, then you don't have to put it in the folder because it's on the internet. Just like I've got the example of the Spider-Man picture and the Squirrel Girl picture and the Black Hat picture, those are all on the internet. Here's some extra credit. Um, it's your choice of what topic you're going to do, of course, but you can get some extra credit if you make the topic about programming. This class is about programming, and there's a whole world about topics of programming. You can look up information on programming and write a website about programming two extra, up to two cr extra credit points. If you don't want to do that one, OK, here's another one. Extra credit point for um, creating a screen in the nav bar and a screen of contact. And in that will be a complete screen where you focus on a contact form but that's a little more work because you need to put it in the nav bar. You need a contact.html, and then you need your contact form up to three points. So the, the grading, of course, will be based on what is in the assignment. Things you do outside of it are nice. You can get a pat on the back if you want, but there's nothing about points on that. So here's all the requirements up here, extra credit, and this is going to be due on Monday. So we're going to stop at this point. We'll have about 45 minutes or so of lab time until 11 if you want, I'll be here till 11. Uh, we'll have some lab time today, and then um, 
the weekend and then it'll be due Monday and turn it in in person like we did it on Monday. General questions? Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, that's it for the moment.